Turbo Kid is set in the post-apocalyptic future of 1997, where everyone uses bikes to get around and clean water is hard to come by. The film's full of over-the-top splatter, synthwave music, and Michael Ironside chewing scenery. Welcome everyone to the Atomic Cinema Experiment. I am Peter and joining me is Tara. Hello. Why not? Greetings, citizens. We've already been over this. Have I, I'm over it. Yeah. You're, you're over you're over like eight episodes before the end of the show. You're suddenly just like, I oh, know, I'm gonna change my, my my hello. I stopped doing it I stopped doing it months ago. <laughs> you didn't notice? No. <laughs> I'm outraged though. Hello. <laughs> it's, just, it's just total BS, quite frankly. <laughs> but welcome everyone. This is a science fiction movie podcast. Uh we are just closing off a little mini season today. We are doing uh our post apocalyptic movies. We've already done three. This is gonna be our final one of the batch, and that is the movie Turbo Kid from twenty fifteen. I almost said 1997, because it's set in the year 1997, but it's not from 1997. It sure is. Uh, so that's <laughs> important to note. But this is a, a co-production between Canada and New Zealand. and w- <gasps> The motherland. Well, I actually started laughing watching it. I, I saw this in 2015, uh, but I started wa- laughing watching it this time. During the, uh, there's like 10 studio logos at the start. And I started laughing <laughs> at one of them because it came up saying Super Channel. And I know what that is now because of you. So I started laughing. <laughs> yeah, it was it was fun to see that logo. I I haven't seen it in like how old am I? Twenty five years. <laughs> I can't remember. You're older than twenty five. Well, since I've seen it in Canada, you dick. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> hey, what I said was still accurate. All right. <laughs> yeah um so I, I got a chuckle out of that and hey at least you know that they're still i mean they funded a movie in 2050 they did. so they're still rock well i mean it's been eight years so they, they could have went under since then but <laughs> but yeah they went down under to make this movie though eh? what a weird collaboration between nations <laughs> like why these two <laughs> because they're both neighbors to countries that are a bit up their own ass you know new zealand has to put up with australia canada has to put up with the u.s they find camaraderie in that and I say that as a Scottish person who's next to England. <laughs> I can respect <laughs> it and understand it. So you're saying there's a country missing from this? Uh, no, 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 no. They don't need a Scottish part of the Triforce here. That's, that's fine. I, I'm just I'm saying I really, I understand it. <laughs> yeah, I right. understand it. What? You're Canadian. Why are you acting offended? I'm American. I'm both. Ah, you're, you're like second wave American. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. Second wave American. <laughs> There's been a lot not of waves. According to my, yeah. Not according to that certificate the government gave me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we're going to talk about Turbo Kid. We'll start spoiler free as we always do. It is a post-apocalyptic film, as obvious, since we're doing it in that season, uh, but it is kind of a... It's like an 80s throwback movie, which is set in the future of 1997, it's kind of like, if you were going to pitch this to someone, you say it's a little Mad Maxi, but with like a teenager on a BMX, and everyone uses bikes because there's no fuel, which makes sense. Of course, they're all using bikes. That makes total sense, actually. Uh, it also stars Michael mm-hmm. Ironside, and there's a bit of a coming-of-age romance quality to it, uh, but there's also lots of cartoony gore, which is maybe the big selling point, uh, as well as synth music, which is another big part of it as well. So that is the the basic idea of it. We'll get into everything else in spoilers, but for now, we'll just dive into how we feel. So Tara, how did you find Turbo Kid? This is very much a made for Tara kind of movie. Um, I kept thinking of like Psycho Gorman when I was watching I was it, thinking, which is yeah, a favorite I, film of mine. I was thinking. Of Psycho I, I've heard Gorman. a lot of people tell me like if you like Psycho Gorman, you should watch Turbo Kid, and it's been on my radar for a little bit. But you know, for, now that I've watched it i can safely say yes i approve of this film (laughs) i approve of all the gore i approve of the soundtrack i approve of the um the style i approve of the feeling of it i approve of the old future of 1997 (laughs) 
<laughs> I I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I I liked this when it came out, and I'd forgotten. I'd forgotten it enough that when I saw Psycho Gorman, I didn't think, oh, this has got a similar kind of tone and like gore style to to Turbo Kid. So I didn't I never clicked it to connect the two in my brain. But when I was watching this mm-hmm. this time, I was like, oh shit! Like this is kind of the same kind of vibe, I guess I'd say, as Psycho Gorman. Yeah. I would say vibe. I'd say Psycho Gorman's still funnier, and like I would still put it a bit higher than this. But this is a good like starter. <laughs> like it's on it's on the right path yeah. to Psycho Gorman. I feel like I'd have to watch it again to decide which I like more. It, it probably is Psycho Gorman, but I do appreciate that this. I mean, this has Michael Ironside, which is a big get for yeah. you know your your yeah. B movie. Um, but it does it does have um kind of its nostalgia firmly in like a specific because you know the, the glove that he gets that makes him turbo kid is effectively the nintendo power glove like that is it very is. intentional it's, it's also a little of the future force <laughs> when we did those films yeah but that's <laughs> the is, david carradine glove this is much better than future force that's not that's not pretend. oh oh i don't know about that but it is good well i'm sorry that i like my main star sober when they're making the movie <laughs> Got such high standards even if it's david carity <laughs> that uh, man knows how to drunk act <laughs> it's not acting when he's that drunk it's just slurring out his lines and hoping for the best yeah <laughs> no uh, yeah uh bad. so no but, but you know as, as we said it's got that retro future thing going for which i mean it's mostly in pretty barren locations so you don't really notice too much in that sense but it's got an aesthetic, it's got, at least in the music, even the opening title sequence, it's got, like, the the 80s kind of, like, tricolor feel to it. Mm-hmm. It looks good. Uh, there's a cheesiness quality to it. It's all pretty much all practical effects, with the exception of maybe the big wide shots of, like, here's the wasteland, but I assume there's, like, oh, to be honest, they look more like matte paintings than they do CGI. Although I suspect that they're mm-hmm. actually CGI that's just designed to look like matte paintings. Which is fair enough. That would be cheaper at this point. I appreciate that yeah. they went for an intention. Yeah, yeah, but I appreciate that they went for that sort of look to it, even if it wasn't legitimately that. But mm-hmm. uh, obviously, the gore is not very realistic. It is intentionally kind of fake looking, but it's fake in a sort of fun. Oh, we're doing like a, you know, we're do- we're putting on a show. We're we're not. Yeah. We're not trying to sell it's us. It's a little as real. Kill Bill Volume One with the gore. A little bit, but it's less realistic than that, though, because like this, this straight up has just these people are are just blood bags. Yes, with high blood pressure. Yes, they, everyone <laughs> explodes into blood when they get hit with laser beams in this movie. So, it's uh, it's good fun. It's also it's short, you know. It's I mean, it's, uh, it's a weird positive to say, but it is. It's like ninety minutes, and it 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 knows its story. It tells its story. It gets in. It moves at a nice pace and it wraps up. There's there's fun fighting scenes where they're using mm-hmm. all this stuff and there's a lot of gore that comes from it. Those are nicely spaced out in the movie. Um, honestly, the only critique I would maybe give it is that I don't know if I necessarily like the, the, the central romance that much. And it's maybe just because either I don't feel that much chemistry or because I find the girl a little bit annoying. <laughs> it's one of the two. I'm not sure which is. <laughs> I actually think she's pretty great. I don't know. I thought. I mean, the romance is is sweet enough, and it works. I think in a young adult style of a film, because mm. this this movie, if you were watching it like, um, I don't know, it feels like that old PG thirteen where they didn't quite know what was acceptable yet, and that maybe this would be something marketed towards kids or young adults. Who are like, oh, g- girls are gross, but a robot girl kind of pretty. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> um. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if I buy the chemistry either, but I I do think that it's it's cute enough for the vibe that they're going for in the film. Yeah, I think I think the vibe that they're going for kind of like almost lets them away with some things not working as much as that. I maybe would want them to in a more serious movie. They kind of get away with it being a bit more light, uh, as long mm-hmm. as it keeps its energy up and keeps being fun. Like I'm not going to complain too much. So I, I think that's a fair statement. I. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's just a good, fun time. I think, basically, if you see... If you like what we're describing so far, you probably know if you're going to like this or hate it. Because there absolutely is an audience who will hate this movie. They just won't get what it's going for. They'll just think it's stupid and cartoony 
and silly and just write it off. And I, I understand mm-hmm. that. I do. But uh, I also uh, very much dig the vibe that this is going for. Um, it's, it's the sort of thing once the synth music kicks in and it's like, you know, it's riding the bike and you see like barren wasteland in the background. It's like, ah, oh, man, yeah, this is this is good stuff. And we've, we've seen some pretty middling to bad post-apocalyptic movies. You know, between this season and like some stuff we've done in the past, uh, this honestly is kind of mm. up there in terms of like where I'd be ranking them. <laughs> well, it's just it's just fun. It's a fun movie. It knows exactly what it is and delivers on that. And it kind of reminds me. I just watched Rad for the first time last month. It was with the the Rift Tracks Live, but it kind of had some Rad vibes to it also with the the bikes <laughs> and like the young adult romance. I mean, you're saying this like I should know what Rad is. I've never heard of this. Oh, Rad, Rad is like a like a '90s, I think, VHS rental movie that was popular with with kids. Okay. Uh, BMX riding bikes, yeah. yeah. I thought... With Lori Loughlin in it. I don't, I don't know. I I um out of the loop on <laughs> on Rad. Uh, Added to the list. Yeah. So. I don't know how much more I've got to add before we get to spoilers. To be honest, it's a pretty like honestly, it's a pretty straightforward movie as well. So I, I don't know, like this may end up in one of the shorter episodes we do because I, I don't think there's a lot of depth to it. No, not really. <laughs> you know, it's, it is pretty straightforward in what it's doing. Um, the other main character we've not really mentioned, so Michael Ironside is the villain, so we we'll mentioned that, and he's got a lot of like, oh, like really kind of what's the what's the way I phrase this. A lot of very specifically personalized henchmen who all have their own outfits, and so there's they all have action figure outfits. Yes, yeah. like one. So the main <laughs> one who's kind of means like got like a skull mask, and he's got like a uh, what do you call it, a circular saw blade on his like glove. Yeah, like that thing from the Dolph Lundgren movie that shot CD players, but like the saw, which actually makes it more. Well, I wouldn't say better. It makes it more understandable as a weapon. I kind of like that that movie, I Come in Peace, does have just a CD launcher. And then there's one who's got, like, a big hat. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but it's got a big straw hat. And he's got a gas mask on. So he he's very distinct. There's the one who looks like the female Goldar from Power Rangers. So she's got, like, sort of gold, like a gold corset on. Yeah, and she but she's got mean. a hair like, uh, like Rufio from uh, from Hook. I think his name was Rufio. It's been too long since I've seen that movie. I it's don't got, remember. It's, it's like a rooster looking hair. <laughs> sure. Okay. Sure. 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 Yeah. Um, and then there's even more than that, actually. They don't get as much screen time. There's, there's an executioner dude, and there's a guy wearing like hockey pads. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, or maybe it's like football armor. By the way, it's like sports armor and a mask. Um, yeah. So they all look very Mad Max, but made by children. Yeah. Which is kind of a theme of the movie. And then the other big character I've not really mentioned yet is the. The New Zealand cowboy, <laughs> which uh, <laughs> Frederick, who is a legendary arm wrestler in the wasteland. Which, see, when they introduced him playing arm arm wrestling, I thought, oh, this is just what he's doing just now. But he's actually known for being an outlaw or for being like a hero or something. And it, but then they kept saying, no, he's known for arm wrestling. I'm oh, okay, that that's his thing. Extreme arm wrestling, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, they they put like a like a a heated up like metal brand that's like waiting so when he wins the contest it brands the other guy's hand it was just like a mark Pretty of the cool. feet yeah so that's a, that's his thing uh, i'm assuming new zealand rather than australian because it's a new zealand movie but i think he sounded He's, new zealand. he sounded australian to me Do you think he sounded, oh, yeah. i'm not really good at telling the difference i know people say that there's a difference but I, i'm I struggle. Uh, the new zealand accent's very sweet yeah I mean, like I, a sweetness there. I mean, Australia's right there. It's, it's a little boat trip across, you know? <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know if they shot this. In a, I mean, I'll be like, this looks more like New Zealand than Canada to me, but I, I'm, I'm basing that in basically nothing. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you could see everyone's breath, so you know it was cold. That's all I know. Oh, true, true, true. Yeah. Maybe it was Canada. I just, I still think of Canada <laughs> looking like this, though. But I mean... Canada's a pretty big place, so it's not. It's a pretty big place, yeah. yeah. I don't. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe it's... it didn't look familiar to me, but it was a post-apocalyptic world. Yeah, but I bet you've only been in like three percent of Canada. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. 
which is which is a normal amount i would assume for most canadians because it's a huge place we can only occupy three percent of it because then <laughs> it's just too cold it's, it's too it's too cold so yeah so that, that's kind of our main characters and uh yeah i guess at this point we can just get into it so spoilers for for turbo kid because it there's not much else to bring up um so would you like to start at the start that we just go through it yeah i think so all right uh we get a narration we do is this the this the cowboy frederick who is talking about the wasteland and like this is the beyond and the only thing i really remember about this is at the very end he goes this is the wasteland this is the future this is 1997 I know, way to get me, like, into <laughs> it right away. Like, okay. <laughs> and then as soon as he says that, like, the, the bike lands in front of the camera, and, we, you know, we, we, we get introduced to our main character, who is, mm-hmm. doesn't have a name, he's simply the kid, and that's how anyone ever refers to him in this. Uh, yeah, actually, I I was looking for his name, and I when I watched it again today, we had to watch it twice, or I had to watch it twice anyway, but when I, <laughs> I was like, what's his name again? And it never came up. So that makes sense. He's the kid. I guess he's just Turbo Kid. Everyone else has a name though, but yeah, uh, not Turbo Kid. And he's not even Turbo Kid until later. No, 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 he has to find the outfit and the, the crash ship and all that stuff before he can be Turbo Kid. Uh, I do have questions about that. Oh yeah, well, I mean, the the opening <laughs> kind of establishes that they're in kind of a zone that's safer. Uh, but their water is like a really struggling thing. You know, it's hard to find water, so that's like what's traded and stuff. But he's got like a little map that he's done in crayon <laughs> in his little journal, and it says this mm-hmm. is the this is the danger zone. This uh, everything behind this red line is is like the toxic wasteland, and we can't we can't go there. It's unsafe. Yeah. And, he and sees, you, like, he'll mark down where he sees like heads on spikes. Yeah, yeah. So he's sort of building this map up, and we get a sense that he's. But I mean, this is just kind of an intro to him in the world, and we see him go back to his like bunker that he lives in, and he's got a bunch of Turbo Kid comics and action figures. He clearly grew up loving this, and has been like trying to find the comics, uh, which is actually a little video gamey. It makes me think of like playing like a Fallout or something, and like those collectibles to find. Yeah. Far Cry 5 had that. I don't know if they, all the other ones did, but they had uh, comic books you had to collect from three different types of comics throughout the map. It was just a little collecting quest that you could do after you're done with the main quest. Yeah. Uh, and we see him catch like a mutant rat for dinner, or to, at least to trade, because someone will want it. Did you, like, mm-hmm. did you like the big prosthetic mutant rat? <laughs> I thought, it was, yeah, I thought it was interesting painting a real picture here that the wildlife has been altered. <laughs> well, it's fun because you being vegan, you don't like when they're messing around with real animals. So this is just a fun, prosthetic, <laughs> silly thing. Oh, is that what you're going with? Okay, yeah, no, it's it's cute. <laughs> uh, but he goes to uh, like the local, like you know, Fallout style town where he wants to trade with the merchant there. And he's a little disappointed that he's only getting one bottle of water uh, for his his stuff. And the water is gross looking. It is not healthy looking water, that's to be sure. Probably better than what's on the ground, but not not by much. Uh, but this guy clearly knows him and likes him, because he, he also whips out a, a comic book. He's like, hey, you've been looking for this issue. And he's like, <gasps> so he's all excited. He takes his comic. This is where we're introduced to... Uh, Frederick as well, doing his arm wrestling. And we already kind of said what this was, but uh, it's just to give us a sense of who he is. I suppose the important thing here is at the end of this scene, um, th- he does bump into the kid, but the important thing is that this other guy comes up and says, hey, Frederick, another one's went missing. And he's like, who? He's like, it's your brother, Frederick. And then we cut to the same actor playing the brother, which <laughs> almost threw me off a little bit the first time I saw this, because I was like, wait, is this maybe the same dude, or is this just him playing is his brother? really? I didn't even notice, honestly. Oh, yeah, it's the same guy. <laughs> he's got like, different hair and stuff, and obviously he's dressed differently. Uh, but we're introduced to... I think I'm just like, wow, they got someone who looks like him. <laughs> <laughs> we're introduced to Michael Ironside's villain, who goes by he's Zeus. He's got a great mask. Oh, yeah, he does, yeah, he's got a big mask. He takes it off most of the time, but yeah. He's also got an eye patch. Well, you... When you got Ironside, like, you want to show him off. Oh, yeah, he just, he, he stands up there, he chooses scenery, and he basically puts on, like, gladiator-style fights in, like, this pit, 
and all of his cronies are all like around the pit cheering and raving and they want to see murder. So there's not much of a fight in this one. It's just this big executioner with a big huge hammer who it goes to swing at his head and it cuts away before you see it. But it's like, okay, it gives us a taste because later on we're going to get a full fight in this gladiator pit. And mm-hmm. it does not disappoint. <laughs> yeah, it, it's... <laughs> No, the, the 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 fight definitely does not. The, this one is just a little tease, like oh maybe they're gonna hold back because it's a kids movie or something. Um, and but like we do get a murder oh. pretty early on, and it is so bloody. Yeah, when you say it's a kids movie or something, I'm I'm assuming you stop thinking that once you started seeing the kills. The first kill, yes. Yes. The first kill with the urine, yes. <laughs> Well, the kill's not... <laughs> you said that as if he kills someone with urine. There's, it's not... The ur- there's just urine involved in the vicinity of the kill, but the kill's not perpetrated so by urine. <laughs> I might have cheered a little. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can tell about that now, because it's kind of a sudden little separate scene. It's um. It's kind of the next scene, too, anyway, right? Well, it's the next time we see Frederick. It's not... I mean, there's other stuff with the kid in that, but we can just talk about mm-hmm. it now. It's uh, basically... Frederick's hunting for this bad guy's base, for Zussie's base, so he can rescue his brother. His brother's already dead, but, you know, he doesn't know that. And he's looking for him, and he stops to take a piss, right? They all stop their little bikes, and he goes to get a piss. And then his, like, second-in-command stands right next to him, and we're like, it's a wasteland. Stand further away while we're pissing. <laughs> we don't need to be right next to each other with our dicks out, please. <laughs> um, and while they're pissing, the bad guy's... Time henchmen all show up behind them and like kill all of the other guys that are with them and then you just hear like a right and the the henchman or the the crony who's standing next to frederick uh you just see him sort of react you see a little bit of blood spurting up and then you see like more spurting out of this big wound from his chest and then when he falls backwards almost like comedy style when he falls back the the, the blood spray goes vertical and then right after the blood spray you just see this single little stream of piss go up and back. <laughs> it's, it's quite it's funny. It's, it's a funny kill. <laughs> bravo. Bravo movie. I like, the, <laughs> I like the idea that because the piss is already flowing, it's not stopping just because he's dying. Like, it's going to finish. It's whatever hard to he stop was emptying. Yeah, yeah. It was going. So it was going to, it's going to keep going. And I hear that happens when you die. You evacuate. <laughs> um yeah but sure uh, fair point tara yes i don't i don't know how accurate it is uh this was a this was a kill i've heard from a nurse piss. <laughs> i'm sure there is some but i don't think it happens as soon as you die though right there's something that happens in the the time soon after you die i don't think it happens it's not like you croak and then you instantly just shit yourself isn't that awful though if that's the thing, if that's the case. <laughs> I mean, I know well, you don't care because you'll be dead, but like, yeah. you know, just the shame. It's going to be defecation there too. People have to find your body. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, so they, be- they don't kill Frederick though. They want Frederick. They want to take him to Zeus so he doesn't get killed. But we get this glorious like example of violence before so all that's all entertaining yes. meanwhile i'm glad they held back on the first kill so that they could do this one as the the official first on screen oh yeah <laughs> yeah no it escalates quite nicely because next time of course is when we get the full fight in the gladiator pit uh and that's a lot more uh oh no no that's not true that's not true well we had yeah, the straw that's, hat guy goes yeah, first. The straw the straw hat guy fights Turbo Kid, and that's like the next big fight. But yeah, yeah. But even even it's, it's still it's still an escalation though, because that's like one big cool kill, and then it's like okay, here's a bunch of them in the gladiator pit. So it still it has a nice escalation. They, they know what they're doing. They they know how to mm-hmm. keep going. They've up. seen a lot of these movies. Yeah. So the kid's just reading these comic at the playground. He's sitting in the swing. And out of nowhere, this weird girl, who turns out to be called Apple, shows up. And she's very enthusiastic and immediately wants to be friends with the kid. And the kid's actually kind of scared and thinks she's weird. So he wants to get out there as quickly as possible. But before he does escape from her, she slaps like a wristband on him. 
which is clearly tracking him or something because it starts beeping. Uh, mm -hmm. So she follows him back to his place um, and he goes to sleep and we get like this flashback to his past that kind of like plays out in parts. So every time he sleeps in the movie, we get an another bit of the, the backstory with his parents. So we'll, we'll talk about all that later because it it's easier to talk about it as one thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, Apple shows up and he's very distressed, but he ultimately decides, okay, you can stick around for a while. So she's still kind of this annoying like tag along for a bit. You know, that's kind of how he's reacting to her. Uh, Ew, but... gross, a girl. <laughs> but well i think that's intentional she is because... a lot she's a lot she's a lot of personality yeah but i think it's intentional because like he is into all these kiddie things and like he's still obsessed with this comic book it does kind of feel like in this world because we find out later his parents died when he was still like eight or whatever he's not really aged up in the same way like mm -hmm. at least not in every way he's he, obviously he's naturally gotten mature in other ways because he's like surviving on his own but He's still very much a kid in a lot of other ways that he thinks. And girls mm -hmm. are probably one of those things. He's probably also afraid of her because she had to go talk to a dead person before she could go talk to him. <laughs> yeah. There's a, yeah I, I think it's a natural worry that maybe she killed this previous person. In the yes. movie. Who she maybe still talks next. to like he's alive and she's okay with it. <laughs> yeah. So, understandable. understand. But he takes yeah. her out uh, scavenging that day and they bond a little bit he tells her about the rules of surviving in the wasteland and he he builds her a, a weapon you, you always need a weapon so he builds a, a he gets like a gnome like a garden gnome and tapes it to the end of a stick which by the way earlier on we see him tape two hammers like back to back together so he's got like a very violent looking weapon that he can throw at people <laughs> was, was the way i read that mm -hmm. but I like that. I like, I like a bit of DIY in the weaponry in a movie like this. <laughs> I do Very enjoy cool. it. So, But she loves her gnome stick. It's the only present she's ever had. She, she's so mm -hmm. excited. She thinks they're best friends now. Yeah. You, she, I think she, if she could cry, she would have cried there. Yeah. Plus the gnome stick, is, it's a little, like, there's a lot of nods to other movies. This one is clearly doing a, an Evil Dead nod. Yeah. Or I, Army of Darkness. Doesn't she cry a little bit later, actually? I think she can cry. Maybe she can. I don't remember. Uh, well, uh, to be fair, uh, later on, there is a scene, it's basically that scene from Star Trek Next Gen, where it's like, data is fully functional. They basically have that conversation later. They do? Yeah, because she's talking about how she can eat and she can cry and stuff. Like, so, like... Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not saying that they're explicitly saying, hey, if I want to put it in your vagina, it'll work right. Like, they don't get that explicit about it, but, like, you, you can kind of extrapolate from talking about eating and stuff like that. that okay, so everything's working. The plumbing is... I did is... not think of that at all. <laughs> <sighs> are you, you're just trying to make me look bad here. You're, you're trying to make me look some sort I'm of pervert. I'm not doing anything. Yes, you are. You're making me look some sort of pervert who is wondering, <laughs> is she fully operational? Oh, so they could bone. <laughs> Of course that's what he's ultimately going to want to do. <laughs> Didn't even think about it. She's literally the love he interest. He just wants a companion. <laughs> they kiss later on. This, this is this is romantic. The, 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 this, is a, this is the love interest, okay? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's definitely a love interest. I just didn't think about boning. <laughs> well, he was, okay? I, I, I promise <laughs> okay. you he was. Okay. Ticket to the bank. All right. The sparrow You're bank. You're probably right. All right. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing the hit Steven Seagal film, Hard to Kill, where he tells mm. the senator, the villain, that he's going to take him to the bank. The blood bank. Ooh. <laughs> Steven Seagal. It's a great movie. He's a great director. No, he's not. Shut up. <laughs> I've seen his directorial debut. <laughs> I don't believe it. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, so yes, the, one of the villains shows up working for Zeus, uh, the straw hat dude with the gas mask, and he chases after uh, Turbo Kid um, after hitting... Because uh, we don't know she's a robot yet. This, this is important. Like We don't know when she gets hit here, 
we think she could be dead potentially because we don't know she's she's got she she's, gets shot in the chest she's yeah. built a sterner stuff uh but he when he's running away from the straw hat guy he ends up falling into like what turns out to be a hatch but we think it's like a pit and it ends up that he falls into like a crashed spaceship and it's like the turbo kid thing is a real character like a real person in this universe it's not just like a fictional character in a comic book this spaceship has the turbo kid outfit on it it has the power blaster glove thing and Mm -hmm. like there's like a video played in the cockpit of like some general saying we need you turbo kid like your earth needs you now or something like that turbo rider his name is yeah turbo rider that was it that was it so the kid wastes no time on putting on this outfit he immediately is like oh f yeah in fact my favorite detail of this is that to make this look futuristic in the context of the movie they put one of those like uh, electric light bulb things that's got all the 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 lightnings hitting this outer globe i don't even know what you call those no i don't know it's um i don't know the spencer's gift (laughs) Or a sharp thing. I can't yeah. remember what it's called. But, yeah, it was a thing that started being a, like used primarily, I think, in the eighties. Plasma 80s. balls. Is that what it, plasma balls? Yeah, I think they're called plasma balls. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna look it up. Plasma balls. If I type in plasma balls, we're all waiting with bated breath for these plasma balls. Plasma ball. I know my signal's Very not good. great, but. <laughs> It is indeed plasma balls. Uh, we'll just have to take Tara's word for it. That's what she was holding up on the phone. Uh, yep. but... So I typed in, and that's the image that, shot, that, that popped up, and also a link to sharper image. That, that well, that's pro- <laughs> that's probably the the correct term. Uh, but I love that he does the pose, and you get the uh, the glisten when he holds up his hand like a poster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like a um, it, it's like an anim- animation that happens from some like Masters of the Universe thing or something. Yeah, yeah. sound effect. Absolutely. So he ends up blowing up Straw Hat Man with like he he blasts the laser at him, and Straw Hat Man just explodes into blood. Like that's what Mm -hmm. happens. And we see that there's like an ammo thing that he can track. Yeah. Well, it's it's a charge. Like it's like basically he's running out of charge, so he's only got one. I don't even think he has any left at this point. But he doesn't realize that he shot it at rocks first, and then he shot it at the Straw Hat guy. Yeah, he doesn't realize it first, though, because he basically goes straight to... Cause, so, the Straw Hat Man kidnapped Robot Girl, right, Apple, and she's been taken to Zeus. So, the kid wants to go to find her, so he goes to like, Zeus's place with a gladiatorial pit, and Zeus is making a monologue. He's Which got... is just an empty swimming pool, by the way. I love that. Yes. I love yes. that little detail. <laughs> he's, he's, he's got um Apple, he's got Frederick, and then there's a red shirt, just so we can kill someone, uh, like in the pit. And then there's like a the executioner looking dude, the sports guy with the mask, and then like the other one who's got like Wolverine style claws on. Like they look like they're all rejects from Street Fighter or something. Like that. <laughs> they're very cool. Yeah, they're yeah. very um it again, it reminds me of Psycho Gorman when you see all the other henchmen mm. um or other universe aliens of bad guys and good guys, or possibly good guys. Um like they all look like action figures. They all look like toys that you would just get from other things and like mesh them together and be like oh yeah they're all part of the same universe even though they, they don't really look it Something yeah like I, know. I think it's cool so just before it's cool going to start think. though uh turbo kid shows up and says that he's a superhero but then when he tries to fire off his blaster there's no charge on it so he looks a little silly and and they throw him into the pit and say all right you're gonna to have to fight with them so Frederick's like, okay, right, I'll take this guy, you you two take this one, and Red Shirt, you take that one. Uh, obviously the Red Shirt dies. The Red Shirt, in fact, he trips and stabs himself in the eye before his head gets <laughs> crushed. Yes, he has a double death, because he's like still screaming with the, the, the knife sticking out of his eye socket, and then <laughs> the executioner comes and hammers him. So yes. he gets blood splatter. I also enjoy that one guy throws like a switchblade, like it's a boomerang at Turbo Kid, uh, and he hits it like a like he's got a baseball bat, and it like lands in someone's like face in the crowd, and they start spurting mm-hmm. out blood. So it's not it's not just the people in the pit who are going to get covered in blood in this. Yep. You know? Yeah, these are like like real gladiators, and you have like you know lions and stuff. There might be some crowd damage. Oh yeah, this is exactly like real gladiatorial combat. Yeah, this is, this is what it looked like. 
Oh dear. Um, yeah, so uh, there's the one guy who gets like sliced across the head, so the top of his head starts spinning. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he had some kind of spiky helmet thing too that separated. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, and then eventually like, his helmet lands next to Frederick, who uses his like Viking helmet to stab into the big executioner dude. So it's a whole thing. Oh, actually, one thing we should point out here is what the villain is doing is that everyone who gets killed gets put into this machine. And this machine chews up the bodies and extracts all the water because the human body is apparently like 90% water or something like that, mm -hmm. he says. Uh, which I, I've heard variations of that, but he, but he basically, some water comes out this little tap and he sips it like he's got a little cup of coffee. And he's like, ah. Well, the water that he sips on came from the hand of the Aussie guy. Yes, yes, yes. Because uh, they chopped oh, off his hand. Yeah, we didn't talk about that scene, yeah. Uh, the car, mm -hmm, said, like, that happened before. Frederick tries to fight back when they're telling him that they killed his brother. And uh, what did they're you... They're going to do an arm wrestle with the, with the blender blades and fire. Yeah. <laughs> and when he goes for Zeus, uh, the, the blade guy just chops off his hand and we get this comical blood spurting out of this fake stump. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was very nice. <laughs> it, it's very good. It's very good. Uh so eventually there's a big explosion here when Turbo Kid blasts uh, the container. He also splats at the one last person when he's got his charge comes back. But they all kind of like skedaddle out of this scene. And it's like, okay, so Frederick's on the run. Turbo Kid and Apple are on the run. And the big thing from this point on in the movie, all in the fact that the villain wants them back because he's pissed off now, is that Apple's actually slowly dying. Her like little like health bar. <laughs> on her wrist is going down yeah she's got zelda hearts <laughs> so they're trying to think of a way to fix her because now he's become attached to her and he basically they go to this like robot cemetery where it's just all dead robot parts and they're hoping to like find some parts to like fix her up uh so that's where they're going um and uh so and along the way they run into the merchant guy from the start of the movie which is only important because he's how the villain finds out where they're going, which is a great scene in its own right. Uh, because they, they mm -hmm. capture this guy and they hook him up to a bike, which has got like a, like, you know, like a, a rope or something like attached to his intestines and then the end of the ropes on the, the wheel of the bike. And they're going to like slowly pull out his intestines to make him talk. But the guy cracks immediately because he's too scared and says, no, they're going to the robot cemetery. Okay, we good? <laughs> Let me go. And Jer Michael Ironside just goes, do you know how long it took to set this contraption up? No, 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 no. We're going to kill you anyway. <laughs> so so the, the blade guy starts cycling, pedaling on the bike, and we just see this comical... I guess it's a... I don't know if it's the same bike, but I guess it's a little bit of a foreshadow because when we first meet the the merchant guy or the trader... He also has some sort of store that's run by a guy on a bike that he keeps telling to like keep pedaling so that we can have power and music and stuff like that. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because there's music playing. Yeah, it's a little bit of karma. Yeah, so so that guy is literally like a hamster powering mm -hmm. the the <laughs> the music and the yes and the building. Yeah, uh, which is because I never even thought about. <laughs> and then it's used as like a a saw torturing device. For <laughs> yeah, I never even thought about like. Oh, there's music playing. Like how they play me. I never even thought. I just thought I didn't even notice it. And then the music turned off. And then he starts yelling at this guy who was like peddling. I'm like, oh, I get it. Now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, very good. So, yeah, no, that this movie needs to be realistic because it's supposed to be kind of zany and silly and stuff. But yeah, that's a nice detail. I appreciate <laughs> it. So, uh, agreed. Yeah, uh, the saw blade did tracks down turbo kid and apple and decapitates apple with one of his blades and they end up <laughs> falling into like the cemetery but it's but it's full of like gas like toxic gas or something uh so turbo kid tries to save her by putting her head onto another robot body which does eventually work but not while he's there uh he ends up leaving because he runs into frederick who's there why is he there well he needs a robot hand like obviously mm -hmm. Yeah, he lost a hand. So he's got a robot hand now. Or cowboy's got a robot hand. That I mean, it's now perfect. he's cooler. So he wants revenge because his brother was killed, and he, you know, his hand. His hand was turned to water. Yes, it was actually. His hand was was turned into water by the villain. And Turbo Kid's got got a vendetta for what happened to Apple. But also, 
as we find out around this part in the movie, also his parents were killed by Zeus and Sawblade dude. Um, in fact, we find out that his mum is the one who took Michael Ironside's eye because she shoots him in the eye with a crossbow. Which, can I just say, were you noticing the fact that his mum was dressed and had the hair of Princess Leia? Or was that just me? No, I definitely noticed that. Yeah. She had the the uh Return of the Jedi look. Yes, yes. And she had like sort of the the be- the sort of slightly darker beige over the light beige kind of color scheme. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh or maybe a light brown over beige, whatever you what you call it. But <laughs> yes. Uh she's not a great actor though, because she has this big one liner before she dies where Michael Iron says like, Oh, we've reached the end of your story and she's like, Well then let's make it memorable. And our line delivery is so kind of flat. It's like, oh, that's a shame. Because that, that's a good yeah. line. <laughs> Everyone else is really hamming it up. There's only one other actor who I thought wasn't very good, but he he was the first death. So. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's gone quite <laughs> quickly. Yeah. yeah, but at least he gets to have the urine, like, fountain oh, death. Yeah, yes. He was um, one of the best parts. Still. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Michael Ironside's like full dictator here where he thinks ed- everything on this land belongs to him, including any water sources. And I think it is mentioned like once during the movie that there's a secret water source that everyone's looking for. It's barely mm-hmm. mentioned, but it does come up at the very end. <laughs> so, yeah. Basically, the, the last chunk of the movie is them going to do a big standoff with the bad guys. So we get like a big fight taking place in like a, a open bit of space. And there's more gore. Uh, to a comical extent where Turbo Kid's left his glove behind, so he's just got regular weapons. But at one point, like one of the villains like goes to hit him with a shovel and he jumps out of the way, so the shovel goes into the stomach of one of the other bad guys. And then Turbo Kid, f- Kid falls on to the, the handle of the shovel and the guy's like upper half just goes flying into the air and lands on another guy's head. Um, mm-hmm. And this happens like a couple times in different ways to the point where by the end of the scene, there's like legs torso they... legs torso or something like yeah stacked up <laughs> and then turbo kid splats and them. the person at the bottom is still alive so he's still like moving around yeah he can't see he's, he's blinded by the the legs that he's wearing <laughs> on his head <laughs> yeah i Very mean this, this is a fun this, this is like you know the, the he doesn't have his like magic laser blaster in this scene for a lot of it so there's a lot of fun like actual you know, they're in jeopardy, he's ducking, he's diving, there's some more gore. Eventually, Apple shows up uh, and rides a unicorn head bike into the evil chick. So she gets stabbed by a unicorn. It's like it's the head mm-hmm. of a unicorn on the top of the bike. And uh, then she starts hitting people with her gnome stick. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's all fun. And she brings the Turbo Kitty's glove back and he starts blasting things. Um, and whatnot. Uh, the big notable stuff, other than just... We see a bunch of blood bags. Yeah. Yeah, everyone, everyone's just turning into blood bags. And that's all fun. The big notable thing here that happens we have to talk about is the reveal. Because... And I, I was about to call this a mistake. Because he has Michael Ironside with a blast and I went, wait, why is he the only one who's not turned into a blood bag? Because he just kind of gets knocked back. And I was like, this is bullshit. What are you doing, movie? What are you doing? But... Is it bullshit? Then he stands up, and it's revealed that Michael Ironside is also a robot. And He's a robot. To be honest, given like the intentional goofy looking of the like the the practical effects in this movie, this like you know half skin ripped off face Terminator style of Michael Ironside, mm-hmm. I thought this looked all right. This looked, yeah, mm-hmm. I thought it looked did. I thought it did too. I mean, it's clearly like um out too far. Sure, know? like the like the eye is, is out further than the other eye the the like um mechanical eye or whatever but it it still looks pretty good it looks, it, it's definitely like they spent a good bit of time and money on this particular yeah they had they had a good uh makeup artist for this one yeah yeah that was good uh which is interesting because he, he goes on about how he was created to serve his master but then his master one day said remember you're just the robot so he rebelled and now that he's been on this tirade as, as a robot who wants to rule the wasteland and i'm mm-hmm. like do you even need water? Like, why? Why? <laughs> I guess he's just used it to control everyone else because he gives them water, and that's why they all work for him. But yeah, you know. Yep. 
maybe he has some sort of cooling system where he needs water. <laughs> oh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe he's the excuse to cool things down. That's a good, good uh, reason as any. Uh, but of course, Turbo Kid just throws a bomb at him and blasts it with his thing to blow him up. It's basically a mini nuke that goes off in the desert. And Apple does actually finally die here by shielding Turbo Kid from the blast. Um, oh, that said though, we did gloss over uh, Circular Saw Guy's death where Turbo Kid stabs him with an umbrella and he starts mm-hmm. spurting blood everywhere. And when he opens the umbrella... While he's still trying to, to, to saw him. Yeah. And when he opens the umbrella that's already impaled in his stomach, the top half of uh, Sawblade Dude's body goes flying into the air. So when he lifts up the umbrella that's now open, it kind of like shields him and Apple from all the blood that's raining down literally on them. I thought that was a <laughs> yes. really nice touch. Like it was just a really smart it was thing. Actually, yeah. yeah. I mean, Turbo Kid <laughs> already got covered in blood from like stabbing him in the first place, but Apple wasn't yet. But he got to protect. Yeah, yeah he got to protect Apple. So uh, that was a really neat touch uh, from the rain of blood. I think that's where they have their first kiss too. That is where they have their first kiss. Yeah. Uh, yeah so that's very, very sweet emotional climax. And the movie ends with Turbo Kid finally riding off into the danger part of the wasteland to explore what's there. He's 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 mm-hmm. not going to stay in his coddled safe zone anymore. He's 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 matured. He's going to go and search for things. Um, but he's got such a cool you know bunker. I know he's got a good place to stay. All cool stuff behind. Also, he yeah. just like when the the bomb went off, it made a big hole in the ground, and water started spraying. Up. Clean water started coming from underneath, and it's like, oh, we found the secret water source. That's mm-hmm. this. We've just made a well. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, Mad Max also would have ridden off. True. After true. helping. Yeah. Which is obviously one of the things that this is very much, uh, you know, hearkening to. This is very much inspired by Mad Max. Yeah. So that makes sense. So the real Turbo turbo Rider yes. is, is from the future or from another world or from the past? Did they cause this change in history? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand the turbo rider thing. I mean, I don't know if there's anything to understand, or than just it's a real thing. And yeah, like I don't think you may think about it too hard, to be honest. Unless there's some cool just in bit this of universe, lore. there's a real turbo turbo rider, and people wrote graphic novels about him. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe he does come from a different universe. Maybe he comes from a universe where that comic's real. And he somehow mm. came into this universe. Maybe that happened when all the nukes went off. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Maybe he was supposed to save us. They never really go into like why there was like a nuclear war or anything like that, or they, they but they definitely talk about it as if it was all nukes because they talk about radioactive stuff and they talk yeah, about Yeah, winter. I think winter was brought up. Yeah, nuclear winter. Nuclear, like nuclear winter. Yeah. Uh I think that's in the opening narration. So yeah, but I, I just don't think I may think about it too much. I think it's just like, oh, it's fun that he found this because this is now the device for which he will use for the rest of the movie, which, you know, maybe maybe you could say, like, you know, because clearly his mother, like, gave him a lot of this stuff. You see him with that viewfinder thing, you know, with the photos, which is a really old bit of child technology as well. I had one of those, yeah. Yeah, where he's looking at all these images of Turbo Kid and he's mesmerized by them. You could maybe say that his, if it represents anything, it represents the idea that his imagination and love for something made his world a better place. Uh, so mm-hmm. the movie makes it literal and he he actually gets to be that. He gets to be the hero that he wants. You could read this as all in his head, but he's actually dying as a child of radiation after he rides <laughs> off when his parents are killed. I guess. It's dark. It is dark. <laughs> The movie's more lighthearted than that, though, so I don't think it's... Oh, I don't, I don't think you have to worry about that. No. Poor Apple, though. <laughs> I almost wonder if they called her Apple just for the irony of, like, you know, Apple the company and, like, technology, and it's, like, she, she's a computer, so she's Apple. I don't know. I think... I don't... Maybe... I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I... When, when they said her name was Apple... Um, first of all, I thought of Michael Jackson, and then I thought of, oh, like Eve. Oh, like okay. Yeah, Adam okay, and I see Eve, that, yeah. She's the apple, like, maybe this is supposed to be an Adam and Eve situation. A, a new Adam and Eve, except she can't have kids. Well, unless she, unless the plumbing's really working. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> but I, I don't imagine the robot makers would have put in a, a working uterus. 
I'd be surprised. She's a friendship unit, so probably not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's for the kid during the day, but in nighttime it becomes daddy's. Okay, that's. This is a, I hate this conversation. <laughs> Oh dear. Um Well <laughs> I guess that's more or less Turbo Kid. It's not it's not a super deep movie. It's a it's a light, fun film that knows what it's trying to be. It keeps its pacing up, which I think is really important. Um I wouldn't say it's got a good story. Like it's it's the weakest part of it is just kind of like, oh this, you know, just leads to that. Like we're supposed to okay, he cares about her now, so he, he wants vengeance. It's all kind of just light and fluffy, but it keeps entertaining enough and the practical effects are really fun and you know it, it doesn't outstay its welcome so i don't think it's quite the home run that psycho gorman is but i do think it's a nice companion piece to that that i would recommend Definitely. if you're into these types of movies so i guess tara what are you going to rate turbo kid it's very much a terror movie i love these kind of films that it's sort of harkening back to I was trying to remember one that I I watched earlier this year called Time Rider with with Fred Ward because that has a very Turbo Rider vibe to it as well. Mm. Um, I think this this is just like the shelf of VHS films blended that take it takes everything good from those that era of blockbuster made for blockbuster movies and like puts them into a love letter in a film and I think it I think it really works. Um, yeah, I, I definitely would say that psycho gorman does a little bit better job of getting that 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 feeling right getting that nostalgia feeling for being a kid and watching those those pg-13 movies that are questionably yeah. pg-13 <laughs> i think the thing psycho gorman has going for it as well is that the main little girl is such a memorable demented little character that she kind of outshines yes. any of the individual characters in turbo kid I agree. Like she's, uh, she's a treasure, and that I think the film overall is just so funny. And this one, although has a lot of fun, <laughs> is a lot of fun and has a lot of funny moments in it. I think Psycho Gorm is just hilarious, which makes yes. it a bit better. What were you gonna say? Sorry, I was gonna say that she aged ten. <laughs> is the girl in Psycho Gorman my age? Yeah, you okay. age ten. Oh yeah. Oh definitely. Yeah. Not no. <laughs> I probably tried to kill my sister also. <laughs> I may have, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't like to okay. talk about it. Um but yeah, get, get, give I, the rating I, before you in and commit yourself on earth. Yeah, I'm I still really love this film, so I'm gonna give it an eight. Incriminate was the word I was trying to say. That said incriminate. Incriminate, sorry. <laughs> That's a weird. Anyway, what would you give that, sorry? An eight. eight. Yeah. I'm not going to go quite as high because I, I don't think it has quite the good enough plot, but I do think it's good and well worth watching if you like the sound of this sort of thing. Uh, so for me, it's a solid seven. It's a good movie uh, that sets out what it achieves to do. Um, so, good. There you go. Uh, that is Turbo Kid. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, Next time, we are returning to a franchise that we have to finish off before Tara's done on the show, and we transition over to David, but we are be looking at Cube Zero. So the next two episodes are us finishing off the Cube franchise. It's funny because Cube Zero was the last one until just last year when Japan decided to remake the first one, so we got two Cube movies to look at. So we'll be doing that. But there's going to be some good gore in that one. Oh, there might be. There might be. We'll see. Uh, but that is coming next week. Of course, you can support all the content over at patreon.com slash TV and get some bonus content uh, over there. But that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching science fiction and computer at Salsa.